It's my birthday. It's my birthday. I'm turning 50. Oh, wow. How the hell did that happen? Hey guys, it's Robin the Lady Biker. How is everyone doing today? By the time this video goes up, it should be my 50th birthday. Oh my gosh, I know some of you out there hate celebrating your birthday. I love celebrating mine. I mean, okay, let's face it. I've lived this long and survived. It deserves to be celebrated because some of the stuff I've done, hmm, you gotta wonder about it, girl. Anyway. Decided for this video and as kind of a way to mark this huge milestone birthday Kind of thought we would take a moment to look back over what this past 50 years of awesomeness has really looked like around not only just for me, but around the world Thinking back to your early childhood memories. So those first 10 years and some of the craziest things I remember are Okay guys eight track tapes. <laughs> so one of my earliest memories is of jumping over the back or the front seat of my parents boat of a Buick or a Chrysler or something to shove an eight track into the deck. I know random crazy memories right? Um, oh how many of us remember having a rotary telephone with that long cord because you know at some point you got to move around during a phone call because you know we all have to. Anyway, go to the kitchen, go to the bathroom, all kinds of stuff. But I mean, they're crazy things like that. Oh, but what an era for toys. The toys, my favorite. All right, who's with me out there, ladies? Barbie. <laughs> oh yeah. We had the Barbie pink Corvette. We had the Barbie townhouse. We had God bless my dad, I can't tell how many times he stepped on a Barbie shoe in the middle of the night. It's kind of up there with Legos. And the colorful words he tried to hold in. <laughs> Love you, Dad. <laughs> um, but man, that was a great era for, for music. I mean, the rock in that time, but for the movies. Everything from Greece. And then you had starting that fever. But you also had Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars. I'm wishing I'd have been old enough to have seen that when it released in the movie theater, but sadly I was not. Um, but, I mean, it was just such an epic decade. And then of course you had the favorite TV show shows. You had Charlie's Angels. You had the Dukes of Hazard. And who could forget Chips? And of course, the love boat. Oh, so much fun every single every single week. All right, and then we rock on into the 80s. The, I mean, this was the era that arguably, since we're talking about TV and music right now, this is arguably the era with the best pop music. I mean, come on, how many weddings even today? They're gonna play 80s music and we all know the words and we're all gonna sing at the top of our lungs. <laughs> I mean, we really do. But really, I'm wondering if part of that was pushed through because of the, the launch of MTV. I mean, they even made songs about the launch of this television channel. Oh, I mean, it was just such a great thing. But we had amazing movies like E.T. and Fame, Dirty Dancing. But, I mean, really, the one that sticks out the most, Top Gun, baby. <laughs> Everyone, I don't care, from young to old, still loves that volleyball scene. It's, it's incredible. But I mean, think about some of the big things from the 80s. I mean, the 80s big hair, huge hair. And we, we brought up from the uh, eight track, we rocked into the cassette tape. And oh my gosh, how many of us, I know I'm multiple times, that sound, when the tape goes out, quite out of the whole thing, and it just made the screech, and you knew, oh, get me a pencil, because you're winding that thing back up. <laughs> to the acid-washed jeans, oh yeah. Um, 
But some of the things the most impactful as we got towards the late part of the 80s, as I was into my teen years, my late teen years, oh, early teen years, mid teen years, was realizing, you know, the world wasn't just my community. It was truly, I realized that we were impacted on a global level by some events. Because one of my big ones is remembering the fall of the Berlin Wall. I mean, that was epic and huge and mind altering because the world as we knew it was changing. And you know, because of that and because of a series of other things that happened around the world, as we rock into the 90s, which was a huge decade for me, but it started off with, you know, that for the first time, even though I, even though I was alive during the Vietnam era, I was like two. So come along to Desert Storm. And this is the first time I ever had friends, people I knew, join the military and go off to war and not come home. I mean, it was a radical mind-bending decade for me because so many things happened. I mean, there was that. There was graduating from high school. There was graduating from college. There was getting married. There was buying my first home. There was having my first child. I mean, it was an epic, epic decade. Um, but on a lighter note, we had so many other amazing things come our way. Um, for me, I had my first car. Well, Technically, it was a truck, it was a nest and pickup truck, but I love that truck, it was awesome. Uh, but we also had entertainment. I mean, massive things that happened like Titanic. I mean, you still hear that song and everybody knows that song now. And the picture. <laughs> but we also had things like, oh, The Matrix. I remember sitting in 1999 with Anna in one of those slings, like baby Snuggies, and she slipped through the Matrix. Yep, we watched it, she, we went and got a late one, gave her a bottle, she passed right out. We watched the movie, it was great. <laughs> but it also had some things like, oh, um, dorms. I remember running out into the halls, or hearing it, because I was not always into all the shows, but hearing everyone run into the halls during commercial breaks because they were going to gossip about everything from 90210 to Melrose Place to Friends. I mean, it was such a thing. They were gossiping of, oh my gosh, can you believe what, you know, just happened with Dylan and Brenda and Kelly and, oh, can you tell that? I probably watched the show, so I won't tell anyone about that. But it was also a great decade for music because you had hip hop really coming on the scene. You had... Oh, Seattle grunge, the whole grunge scene. And I mean, it affected the way we drank, but it also affected music, it affected, it affected culture, it affected fashion, it was a movement. But for those of us who grew up in the South, baby, 90s country was king. You, George Strait, Reba McIntyre, George um, Brooks and Dunn, um, Clint Black, I mean, Shania Twain, baby. <laughs> we, it was just all of that that happened right there in the 90s. It was such a, such an epic, epic decade. And then we had Y2K. Enter the 2000s. I mean, how many of us just knew that everything was gonna go sideways? And then it was kind of like a rah, rah, rah. So in some ways, the 2000s was just a, sort of this odd decade that in so many ways, didn't have an identity really all of its own. It kind of stumbled along and struggled, and for many reasons, and I understand that too, because as epic as the 90s were, 2000s was a tough decade for me. I mean, I had some good things happen, like spending a few years living in Germany, which I absolutely love. Germany was such an amazing experience, and giving birth to my youngest child, and you know, being the mother of multiple children, which was a whole learning curve in and of itself, but it was the decade that was difficult because in many ways I lost myself. Uh, I realized at that time that I didn't know my own value and because of that I really had the lowest self-esteem I had in my entire life. Um, it was also the one that, that I faced a lot of external challenges that 
really fed off of that lack of self-esteem. And, um, you know, the events of 9-11. The events of 9-11 really shaped so many of us. What followed on, because my husband at the time was military, and that radically shaped the next several years for us, and in many ways ultimately led to the divorce between he and I. Um, and then also the difficulty of starting over with two young kids, and that was difficult. That was really challenging. And truthfully, if it had not been for my friends, if it had not been for my family, um, I'm not sure I would have made it through that decade. I really don't. And my kids were the reason I kept getting up in the morning. They, they are still my gift. But you know, 2000s also gave us some kind of cool stuff. It did give us Lord of the Rings. Oh, I mean, that's still affecting our culture today and our movies and our entertainment. And Avatar as well. I mean, here, there are two things that, you know, we fast forward now, and these are two things that are still affecting us in a positive way. Entertainment and, and technology. And, um, it was a tough year, but there were some beautiful jewels that came out of it as well. Then we come into the 20 teens. 20 teens, is that really a term? Well, it's my term. That's the one I'm going to be working with. This was a good year. It was painful because there was a lot of growth, but it was the year that I kind of figured out who I am and my own value. And I refused to accept less than what my value is. And I think all of us that live to be right around 50 go through this at some point where we kind of discover who we are. And I started doing that in the 20 teens. Um, of it is, even though I had a few detours through that whole decade, I started living life without excuses. And that's been such a freeing thing. Um, the 20 teens gave me a lot of beautiful things. Um, I found my true partner. Oh my gosh. Allie, my ride or die, my gift. He, meeting him and us finding each other has just been amazing. Thank you, Cindy, for arranging to get us at that same event because the rest is history. Um, but in meeting him, I also got my bonus daughter. So, you know, I went from being a mom of two to a mom of three. And now watching those amazing, beautiful kids become the incredible humans that they are is, is, is wonderful. And it's been beyond. That's all I can say, she's been me on. Of all the things that I've done and all the things that I've lost and then been given, I have to say one of the best things that happened in the 20 teens is finding my motorcycle community and learning to ride. Uh, you know, finally getting to a place where I was brave enough to take on the challenge and then getting Bob and getting out on two wheels and exploring and you know going to babes right out you know doing all these amazing things i mean everyone out there who's on two wheels or three you know how incredible our community is there it is second to none it is the best it also was the decade where i kind of started my social media journey even though i didn't start into youtube and all that until right into the early 2020s, but it's really where I kind of got everything started, was in the 20 teens. And, you know, meeting my community here and having all of you that I engage with has just been an epic thing as well. All right, guys, so now as we walk into the 2020s, and as I walk into my next decade of life on this earth, I'm really, just grateful for it, for where I am and for being where I am and in this place right now because I know my value and I like who I am, who I'm becoming and who I'm going to continue to become. You know, there are changes happening and okay, let's get a little real on this one. Once we hit 50 and anyone who's hit 30 and then hits 40, you know, there's some changes that happen. 
mentally, emotionally, physically. And the same thing, it's happening with 50 and they are what they are. They're just gonna happen. And so many people have been telling me, oh girl, just get ready, just get ready. But I'm finding that I'm having to reframe it for me because yeah, things are changing and I'm not like I was at 25, even though I still think I am in my brain, I'm not anymore. But instead of looking at it as a loss or something negative, I'm choosing to take it on as an opportunity to learn and to become stronger and to have new experiences. Because, you know, life is life. Things are gonna change. It's never gonna stay the same. And if I tried to force it, I would only be miserable. So guys, cheers to the next 50 years. Let's go out there and be, an, and start another 50 years of awesomeness, not just for each of us, but also for the world. All right, guys, so for those of you who are over 50, what is your favorite thing about being in this half of life? What is the best thing about it? And for those of you who may or may not have reached it yet, what's the one thing you're hoping to get or to achieve by the time you reach 50? All right, guys, well, it's hot today, so I'm gonna stay inside, but tomorrow's supposed to be gorgeous. And so I'm hoping you are gonna do what I'm gonna do, and that's get out and ride. When you do, have fun. Be safe. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.